Okay, before we can uh, steam the locomotive in the brass, uh, we just need to temporarily uh, fit the radio control gear into the tender. Uh, we start off with the switch. This is the switch. And in the tender this itself, there's already built into the tender a, uh, a mounting there. So this guy goes in here. And then we'll just put the, uh, the screws in it fixed perfectly. And then we'll, uh, we'll crack on. There's one. Okay, I'll just tighten this up proper now. So, that's a switch in. And then we've got uh, the receiver and the battery holder to fit. So I'll probably use a bit of blue tack to put them on and the same with the battery holder. But we've also got the um, cables, the extension cables that go um, from the receiver and they need to go under the tender to be able to fit to the cables that are coming from the servo, from the servos on the loco. So I'm just going to turn this upside down and take a better look at what we've got. Okay, they go through from the other side, there's one. There's the second one. So there's a number of things we have to figure out here. The extension cables from the server that come out through here, because of the position that they're in with the wheels, I think we're just going to tape them in here. Like that. So that they don't get in the way of the wheel. Okay, with the server switch mounted and the two servo lead extensions put through the floor, they now have to be put onto the right uh, connection on the receiver. And I know that the one it isn't painted red, that is for servo 1. So we'll go ahead and do that with black downwards in this case. Servo 1. There's that one, and uh, the other one is servo 3, check, think, think, servo 3, yeah, okay, just push that on with a bit of blue tack, and hopefully it will, because it's temporarily, temporarily stay in its place, now and then with uh, the battery box, again with a bit of blue tack, just for now, and put it on.
Okay, so after the fun of uh, running the local on the track uh, last time, what I want to do today is just trial fit some of the detailing parts um, before the body uh, comes off the loco for uh, for painting. So there's no problems after it's been painted with uh, with fitting some of the some of the smaller parts. And as you can see. Uh, if I move the camera across, I've got a box full of stuff. Some of the parts, some are roundhouse, and there are some further detailing parts from local works. And I want to sort of uh, take this opportunity to think about where I'm going to place uh, these parts from local works. So various, uh, um, yeah, we've got oil boxes, we've got uh, uh, lubricator, and so on and so on and so forth. So. Let's uh, let's crack on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to check is that the handrail knobs, they actually go through the holes, especially the rear handrail, uh, the rear holes, because that's two two plates uh, soldered on top of each other. So we'll just have a look at that. Fits through, no problem. No problem. Hey, no problem. And no problem, just turn the local around and do the same on this side. Yeah. Okay, so that's the handrail knob. So that's a check on that one. There, okay. Okay, the dummy whistle. Um, there's a, a mounting with the bolt and there's uh, this, uh, this uh, rod that goes through, which I assume... Um, simulates the, the the steam pipe going through however if I try and put it on I don't it's not working it won't go through the holes aren't quite in line so I might just have to bend this a little bit like so and see if it fits then no still not so I'll try it again bend a little bit more Okay, goes on now. Does it fit on the top one? Yeah, it fits on the top one too. Just about. Just about. It's not a very good fit. I don't really want to elongate these holes. And then um, the dummy whistle. goes on top like that so I hope you can see that and then dummy whistle goes on like that I think that's probably the better the better solution okay the next parts what I'm going to look at are these spectacle plates I've got spectacle plates here and they fit there's two tabs they have to be bent horizontally and they're supposed to go through the two slots there and then um, they're bent down once once they're fitted but to me it's all about whether once they're bent they fit through the slots so what I'm going to do I'm going to bend them through 90 degrees now so I'll bend them through 90 degrees now Yep, that goes in okay. Fine, we'll do the same with the other side. And then that will be the spectacle plates. So both uh, spectacle plates temporarily fitted. One, take the other one off. Two, so that's that. Um, the next thing, we come across now the uh, first uh, local works uh, piece. I want to discuss the tank fillers. Um, this is what you get from Roundhouse, and of course it's perfectly adequate. And you see that on um, and uh, on many more locomotives from uh, from Roundhouse to use this sort of uh, fitting for a tank top. However, I much prefer this detailed part 
from local works rivet detail the tank the tank lid actually opens okay there you see the difference between the original roundhouse one and the local works um, and the local works uh, five scale uh, tank top okay the next component and uh, which I want to, which I, uh, want to look at is a roundhouse um, detailing part and these are um, etched cylinder covers um, obviously standard your cylinders are in brass and they remain in brass but there's a lot of sort of click on click fit cover that you can get and if you look it's also got riveting details in it as well if I can get that in the light there and um, I ordered them black but the black this is a gloss black this is a gloss black and the um, chassis and the floor plate there um, that is I painted that satin so when I'm doing a uh, painting session spray painting I'm gonna give these a coat of the same uh, paint that I painted the chassis so they should be blend so they should blend in a lot better 